Okay, so I was asked to record a video on how to re-rig models from one Total War game, say Attila, into another, say Warhammer 3 or Three Kingdoms or what have you. Now, in order to do that, you need to first get permission from CA and, if it's Warhammer, from Games Workshop. And they may say no to you. Um, and so... I've never been denied by them, but I haven't asked them anything very major. So um, essentially the only mod I've actually done this with was when I uh, imported people of color into Warhammer 2, which also happened to be my most voted on while least popular mod, thanks to internet racists. But you know, you may get different play depending on what mod you're doing. They may turn you down. They might say, yes, that's fine, but you need to get permission. So who do you contact? On Discord, the person's name is Other Tom CA. So that is Other Tom CA, as in Creative Assembly. And he's going to be your point of reference regardless because he can answer questions involving uh, CA. And with Games Workshop, he just gets back to you on that one. And he's pretty quick turnaround, too. Okay, now when I was originally doing this, so let's go to Asset Editor, um, Attila wasn't even supported. So Ole, who created Asset Editor, I was asking about it with him, and you know he doesn't even own Attila. So he actually added Attila support because I asked him. So thanks, Ole, for that. Even though it turns out that um, we, we ran into issues with my mod originally when I was trying to um, uh, import those models just because the rigid models themselves are fine. It's the um, like skins that we run into issues because the file structures are different. And I'll show you that, but I'm not going to go too much into how to deal with that skin fix. Um, but essentially, you have to use the uh, you have to edit them, the DDS files, the skin files, and you have to kind of import them into the game using the assembly tools. Uh, like Bob the Builder in the um, assembly tools. So they don't have those yet on Warhammer 3, so good luck with that one. But for everywhere else, um, all the other games, they do have it. So you may be able to do that, but it's just something to be aware of. This video is just on the model and its animations. I'm not going to be worrying about the skins. You can worry about that yourself. Um, now, I actually worked really hard with... Well, I didn't do much, um, but... Uh, so the guy who did Phaser Tools, his name is uh, Publius Cornelius Phazitus, uh, so Phaser. Um, so he does the RME editor. So he worked with me, i.e. he did. He was trying to get the fixes to work. Um, and then as well as Olay, who does the asset editor. And so those two were working to try and get it to work. And we we're just running to issues where essentially the skins just weren't showing up in the game correctly. Um, but luckily we just had Troy at the time. Troy came out with a new DLC that brought in other models that worked better. And so I ended up just using those. Okay. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out that you may run into issues with your skins, but let's just talk about the actual, this part. And once the Immortal Empires comes out and I recreate my most hated mod for extra internet hate, I guess, like I need more of that. Um, I I will go over the whole mod process with it, but right now, just gonna do animations. Okay, so first of all, what we wanna do is make sure our settings, in our settings, our current game is on Warhammer 3, because that's what I'm gonna be importing them into. If you're gonna do it into any other game, just make sure you select the game that you wanna import them into. Okay, now we go to File, Load All Pack Files. I'm gonna pull up Attila. So Attila is now in, and I'm going to bring up Carl Franz because that's a human model that I know off the top of my head, and I'm going to just need some model that uses the skeleton that I want to re-rig it to. So in this case, Humanoid 1 is a human model, so it's going to be the closest. All right. But we don't actually need him at all, and it, the model isn't important, so we're going to hide it. All right, now let's go to Attila. Now, the file structure is a little different on it. It's a rigid model. No, sorry. I always go to rigid models. It's variant mesh, variant models. 
Oh, I want to put a shark. Oh, man. Let's stick with Leman, though. Okay. So we go to skin. So the way they're broken up into is like skin and clothes are separate. So we have African head hands. Now, Olay pointed out after watching my videos that you can just, instead of import reference model, you can just click and drag. That's way easier. So thanks, Olay. All right. So here's the model. Again, I'm not going to do the whole body of it because that's not really important. We have it in here. So let's hit the animation and see. Well, it doesn't work, obviously. Um, so let's right click and make it editable so that we can edit it. And again, it doesn't work, um, but that's OK. We're going to re-rig it. So all we have to do is uh, select them both with Shift and clicking them because I just want to do them both at the same time. Though in reality, if you're pulling from Attila, the model's texture is a lot lower quality. And so I think it shows up most in eyes and mouth. If you compare that to Carl Franz's head, I mean, his eyes are just so much better quality. So definitely consider that, but that's just a um, you know personal preference. All right. Anyway, so we are going to select those and we're going to re-rig. Now, I'm going to auto map based on name. And because these are both human models, it's going to be pretty close. Um, there's a few negative ones which we need to fix. So first off, BN neck. Um, this is just above head, so I'm going to choose the neck just above head, which is the same one as the other neck. And you might have some issues, but it probably won't be noticeable. The next one, we have a uh, left upper eyelid. So we have a choice between kind of eyebrow or eye left. I'm going to choose eye left because that's probably closer. Same thing with here, the right upper eyelid, I'm going to say eye right. And that's everything taken care of, so we're going to hit OK. And now you notice that it animates just fine. Cool. So that's done. Now we just save it, you know, do your generate your loads and then save it as a rigid model, import it into your um, mod in Rusted Pack File Manager. Again, I go through all this once I uh, once Immortal Empires comes out and I actually need to make this mod. But um, a few things to note is that you need to make sure that all the DDS files for your models are in your mod as well. So notice these diffuses are in variant mesh, variant model, man, skin, text, Africa. So basically, you need to follow the same file structure or change it, change the file structure to match your mod's file structure um, and whatever game you're working with's file structure. Just something to be aware of. So make sure that you've done that. And you have to have a skin for all this. Now, notice this was the issue that I was running into is that the models from Attila use different file structure, decal dirt map and decal dirt mask. So as well as their normal masks being different, um, they essentially, I just ran into issues that were caused because of the differences between games. Um, and um, as mentioned, Bob the Builder in the assembly tool can sometimes alleviate those issues, but that's just beyond the scope of this video. All right, so as mentioned, I was running into issues with the skin. It was like just not showing up correctly. The mouth and eyes were freakish looking and the skin was just the wrong color. It was way too dark and there's nothing that could be done to like improve it. So, or at least at the time, I didn't use Bob the Builder to try and fix it. I was hoping to avoid that. So then um, Troy came out with uh, Memnon and then I had models that would work for me. So I just switched over that. And let me show you that one now. So if we go to load all pack files, let's say Troy now. OK, so let's bring up Memnon. Just because that's somebody I'm thinking about right now. Variant models, man, skin. Again, it's kind of similar file structure to Attila and kind of similar to Warhammer. It's weird. Um, but let's click and drag. And he's now, oh, this Agamemnon. Well, that works too. Here's, I forgot. Here's Memnon. Here's Agamemnon. OK, let's take a look at the animation. Hey, look. Agamemnon animates just fine. Now, why is that? Well, it's because Troy actually uses a lot of animations that Warhammer uses. So if you're importing from Troy, hey, things are going to be pretty good for you probably. In fact, if you take a look at um, their files as well in general, you'll actually see they have variant models, but then they have Warhammer variant models. So they actually have some Warhammer models in the game, obviously for things like... Um, you know, uh, uh, the Hydra and stuff. 
So um, yeah, something to, to note is that Troy is most similar to Warhammer, so you might be able to do things much easier from there. Anyway, hopefully this video was um, helpful if you're looking to do something like this. Again, the big thing is get permission from CA so that you, you don't get banned from modding. But there's a lot of really cool things you can do um, here. And like I said, it's super easy to import it from Troy. So if you're doing what I did, right, that got me a ton of internet hate, but maybe it's something that you want to go through, um, you know, you can bring in some people of color from other games. That would be kind of cool, right? Like um, if we bring in Agamemnon, right, you know, hey, suddenly we have some black characters in Warhammer. Um, Obviously, the internet racists are going to hate that, but who cares what they think, right? Anyway, hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching.